Insiders. Warren, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, man. It's been a little bit. And so Warren is one of the fastest rising country stars in Nashville right now. It's crazy to watch him blow up like he has. And so he's got a new album that is out today. I bet that's cool to finally get this whole thing out there, huh? Like, it's exciting to finally put the whole body of work out? Yes, get it off my shoulders. You say get it off your shoulders. I mean, you feel like you've been keeping secrets from people or what? <laughs> no, I just think that, like, especially, you know, this all being first times for me. Being a new artist, I'm going through so many firsts in my life. So I think going through the process of making a full body of art, full body of work, all the sleepless nights, hours in the studio, I think when I say get it off my shoulders, I think I'm just excited to get out there to the fans. Do you play a lot of the new songs, Will You Now? Like, will it be all, all the new stuff from the record on your live shows? Um, I wouldn't say all the new stuff, mm. but it's going to be a pretty different looking set come this fall. That's pretty cool. It's exciting, right? Very exciting. We'll play some new stuff. So you played that show recently with George Strait and Chris Stapleton and Little Big Town. Full stadium. That's got to be really cool. Did you get to meet them? <sighs> Unfortunately, no, I did not get to what? meet them. What? Yeah. They block you off? They know? You write songs about them? About Poison? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, we don't want to get... So, Wow. Well, I think that uh, Chris and George are like ghosts. I think that, you know, they've been around for a second. And um, I played the 4 o'clock opening slot. I love Chris and love George. Mm -hmm. Would have loved the honor of meeting both of them. Um, but they play the show and they're they're gone. I mean, I would wait by the door. <laughs> <laughs> like a fan? Yeah, Chris George. Chris George, it's me. It's me, Warren. How, that, how did you get on that show? That's pretty cool. Um, it's actually a cool roundabout way. I actually found out about that show uh, last fall, I was playing in Pittsburgh. My booking agency, uh, shout out to Jeff Crones. He was there with my manager, Charlie Salvatore. And it was actually after the show. And they came up to me. They're like, hey, how would you feel about playing a stadium show with George Strait? The promoter reached out. And Ohio's been really good to me. And um, just being up there in the Northeast. So the promoter really liked me and offered me a slot on the bill. Is it wild to you that you've been doing this for a relatively short time? but people are spending money and filling up places to watch you perform. You know, if you think of it from that terms, yes, it can be. But as we talked before, the athletic background, once I put my mind to something, I think I'm just so driven and I'm so determined to achieve goals and keep building this and no sleep, no rest kind of thing. Last night, I was supposed to have a day off. Yesterday, I was supposed to have a day off. Day off after a three-week run out west. Nope, I'm shooting a music video, I'm shooting content. I say add it to the calendar. I hop on social media last night to go live just to hang out with the fans because I just, when the iron's hot, man, just keep striking. What's life like for a new artist that's popping off big time? Is it just constant? It's constant, and I think that, you know, it can be scary, but I think what I like to attribute it to is having rituals and habits that are just good for you being athletic, working out, ice tubs, you know, all these things that are instilled in you from my athletic background that allow you to have a good mental perspective and a good good people around you, people, good support system, people on your team that, you know, see the vision, see the goal, and that everyone's going towards the same goal. Amy hasn't, you guys haven't met, right? You and no, Warren? no. So tell Amy about your athletic background. Oh, yeah, I was just about to ask because I don't, I don't know. I mean, I was going to guess football, maybe baseball, but... Those would be good guesses, um, but uh, lacrosse for 12 years, oh, which my, is like football and baseball guess. combined. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes, um, lacrosse for 12 years, and uh, as me and Bobby have spoken, seven concussions to account for oh, it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I was always an athletic kid growing up. I got that from my pops. Athletics were such a pushed thing in my household of just what it teaches you, and I think I bring so many of those disciplines and characteristics with me on the road into the studio of just it's a different beast the music industry but if you have those roots with you from athletics i will always promote sports do you feel like you're still disciplined even as an artist are you still waking up at a good time keeping your body in shape like a lot of those traits are rolling over into this 100 percent, 100 percent. um i think that you know it's you know you're disciplined when those days roll around and you absolutely do not want to do it but you still do it and i think that I'm trying to ice bath every single day when I'm on the road. I'm always boxing. I'm always on my TM, who's my buddy, who holds the mitts for me. So we're always boxing, either going for a run, trying to find a nearby gym. So I just think that it's just doing the things that suck sometimes over and over again. And then it just it's ingrained in you. Are you a good cook? I wouldn't say I'm a good cook, 
but once you end up living on your own, you kind of have to find your way. And um, so I'm a big chicken guy. I love chicken thighs. So chicken, rice, uh, sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, salad. I try to eat as clean as I can. I mean, this is the healthiest artist we've ever had in the studio. For sure. Well, like, uh, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw, too, yeah. Pretty healthy. Pretty close. But Tim had his non-healthy stage. <laughs> oh, an extremely <laughs> non-healthy stage. Where if Warren hasn't gotten there yet, or maybe never yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, coming, moving to Nashville, and you didn't even really know what a manager was until you had kind of one up going, hey, man, let me tell you what my job is, what I can do for you, right? Yeah. Like you're that new to this world. 100%. And isn't it weird that you have to pay people a percentage of your money? Oh, I hate it. It's so weird. <laughs> it's still, it's still, They're standing in there right yeah, now. So, and it makes sense. And listen, There's logically, they're yeah. able to make you X amount more than you're paying them percentage-wise. But it's weird. When it's time for the money to come out and you got to cut 10 here to an agent, 15 to a manager, that's a new world to be in because you're like, I, I made this money and now i got to give it away. I know. I think we talked about this last time we were together. Yes, it's, it's a unique feeling. It's a unique feeling. Out there on the road, slaving away, riding, as I'm staring at him right now, giving him a wink. And then paying them 15%. That is it. So the record is out today, finally. You're going to pl be playing these tracks mostly on the road. Are, there, are, you, are you testing them out? Do you test out some of the songs that maybe people haven't heard yet to see what the crowd reaction's like? 100%. I mean, I, dude, I was, I was uh, promoting Pretty Little Poison before that song came out. I mean, I was promoting that last fall, early in the fall on the road, just trying to, you know, market it, feel it out, see how the shows go. So then... You see the videos on social media now. By the time it's out and it's exposed, played in Ohio and um, ten thousand people screaming it at me. So it's it's worked. Um, I've added other songs into the set along the way. I just played Weeping Willow a song on the record for the first time live. It was really well well received. Um, people on social media seem to really like it. So I think I use social media as like a test testing subject. And if it goes over well, then I kind of start to put it into the set and see how people like it live. Two final questions. One, social media. Some people say you hack the system. What does that mean? What? Because I don't. Some. I brought you up to a friend of mine. He goes, "Oh yeah, I like that guy's music a lot." But he's also the one that hacked the system. And I was like, "I don't know what that means." I think it's a good excuse to just say that you know, I have a secret or I found it out that something that someone else didn't find out. I think that what I can attribute it to, which I always like to talk about, it's not skipping steps. And it's just paying attention. Shout out to Taylor Swift. She listens to her fans, what they have to say. I think it's, I have a business and marketing background. So once I realized that people were liking what I was doing, I was just paying attention and just continuing to do the, continuing to do the same thing over and over again, whether it's new covers to then original music, try this, try that. I think hacking the system is being consistent and posting all the time and being hands-on. Because I'm still posting my own stuff, even at the as fast and as a thing that can get to be a pain in the butt. Rituals and habits, disciplines. I'm still the one getting the content, editing, putting text on the screen, figuring out what the caption is. So I think it's just being ingrained in what you do and keeping your hand on the pulse. People are kind of blaming you for their problems. Is kind of what I hear from from you saying that. And I went and looked at your page. I was like, "What's he doing? He's not hacking anything. He's actually just." posting a lot which is kind of what they say to do and if you find something that doesn't work you don't post that anymore and you and yeah I, I again i didn't know what they meant by hacking the system but if that's what it is you've got you've been successful at it everybody's looking for an excuse i think you hit the nail on the head everyone's trying to look for an excuse or how is he doing this well when you post once a week or you post once every two weeks or you're not listening to your fans you're not going live you're not responding back to comments i think it's treating it as a whole other job. Social media is, it's a whole other part of the industry. And I think with the world that we're in now, I'm a living proof, social media can change your life forever. You hear that guys? Yeah. Get to yeah. work. Yeah. I'm tired of this bull crap you guys posted once a week for the show. <laughs> but we were all here, This we, the, we started this before social media even existed, but I feel like we've done a good job going. Don't make us sound old, Amy. <laughs> We've always been here I'm only getting, since social media existed. We're getting y'all in trouble. Yeah. Wow. No, no, I, I, I completely agree. I mean, and I think there are different examples I know of people who have been, oh, or let's go back to even the early musicians when they signed deals with the devil. Mm -hmm. No, they're just really good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're like, no, they must have signed a deal with the devil. That's the early version of this is what's hilarious about it. Well, good for you, man. I mean, I, I've seen the hard work that you've been doing. I'm really proud for you. You've been killing it. Um, my second and final question is when you let your hair down. Yeah. 
And I have full hair. I don't grow mine out, though. But my, I have big, thick, full hair. Your hair is, like, luscious. Yeah. Now, you must have a hair care, like, a, a regiment for that. Um, I have very thick hair, too. My mom and grandmother always like to laugh and say that I have horse hair, just super heavy. Um, but for me, it's honestly just not washing it every day. And it's allowing your hair to get, yes, a little dirty. But for me, I try to wash it once, twice a week. I have shampoo and condition. And then I use dry shampoo. That's it. Yeah, dry shampoo is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lifesaver. Let, let us girls talk over here. Right. No, I mean, that's cool. Us. Maybe that's what I've been doing wrong. Is that I wash yeah. my hair every day. No, no, Eddie, you don't have... <laughs> right. It's, it's awkward for us to say <laughs> now, but because he's... With your... Have you always had long hair? Like, really long hair? Uh, majority of my life, yes. Nice. Yep. Cool. I thought you might have hacked the hair system, too. <laughs> now, the fun thing is, too, I was bullied for a while for having the long hair. As I got older, then the long hair was the cool thing to have as a lacrosse player. So then everybody, then everybody started long doing. hair. Yeah. Dang, now I want long hair, though, because he's here. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby said, I don't cut my hair out. for like eight months yeah. now. You're like, hey, what happened? I don't know, man. Warren just mm -hmm. told me. Well, congratulations on everything, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. The new record is out today. And Warren, let's see, tonight we'll be in Jordan, New York. And tomorrow, Montreal, Canada. Louisville coming up the Kentucky State Fair next week. And then Dewey Beach in Delaware coming up. It's a lot of shows. This is a whole page of just your shows. Sometimes there's like a half page and there's like some notes. This is just tour dates. Mm -hmm. So you're grinding, you're hustling. I respect that. You, hey, you hacked the touring system. Yeah. I did. You showed up over and over again. <laughs> you have hacked the touring system, Warren. Congratulations, buddy. I feel I like it. with this kind of your, your work ethic, it's almost like one day you may be the, the ghost backstage i mean obviously it's the goal but like you're going to be playing and some guy coming up on i don't know some new social media app that's out then it's going to be like oh man i didn't get i didn't get to meet warren he just like played and then i couldn't hologram ran. in to see warren right <laughs> so, yeah or whatever yeah. it's going to be like because the I man mean, in black all black just vanish in the night do you yeah. do you wear clothes other than black or is it all black all the time um honestly i do uh, i wear this to the gym too you know the denim and all that <laughs> just get it um no i um Honestly, the look that's been the most popular for me on stage is the all black. I think it's it's funny because like we talked last time, um, it does give off an intimidating kind of vibe to it, especially on stage. But then when you met me last time and we actually got a chance to talk, I think it's cool for that dichotomy on stage and then the fans meet me after the show at a or pre-show meet and greet or I'm signing merch after a show. It's um it's funny. You and smile I, more than somebody in yeah. all black should smile. Yeah, he, I know. You're, you're more gentle than I would have thought. Yeah. That's an interesting word you use there, Amy. Gentle. He's gentle, gentle in how he speaks. He's pretty gentle. Like, oh, yeah, I'd say warm. Not, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about gentle. <laughs> I don't I'll know take, why gentle. I'll take gentle from a woman. Yeah, That's a compliment. I, okay. That's a compliment. Okay, warm works too. Uh, you guys, the Pretty Little Poison Tour, it's all over. I mean, he's doing shows everywhere. If you live somewhere, he's probably going to be near there. Uh, go to warrenziders.com, and the record is out today. By the way, on your tour, a Thousand Horses coming out to support, and that they're, I mean, they 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 rock. Love that. Like, literally and figuratively. It's a, they go hard, too. I think it'll be a good combination. Yeah. I look forward to it. All right, there we go. Warren Ziders, everybody. Thank you, Warren. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you all for having me. It's, it's about